just in time for Halloween, we have a preview of Callisto Protocol and updates for the season pass for Marvel's Midnight Suns on today's daily gaming news. Welcome back gamers. Before we get into today's news, if you would do me a favor, smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already to support the channel, and of course, leave any feedback, thoughts, or constructive criticism in the comments below. Now let's get into it. So we're going to pull up an article from GameSpot who had some hands-on time with Callisto Protocol. And I'm going to be reading highlights, skipping through a lot. So if you want a more detailed look into Callisto Protocol, feel free to go visit GameSpot's article on it. Starting off, it states here, developed by Striking Distance Studios, the Callisto Protocol series you play as Jacob Lee, who's been kept in Black Iron, a prison located upon Callisto, one of Jupiter's moons. Why Jacob is being held there hasn't been revealed, regardless of his reason reasons for being there though, Jacob quickly finds himself needing to escape as a deadly infection sweeps Black Iron, transforming the former human inmates into monstrous mutations referred to as biophages. The preview was based off of an hour and a half of time with the game. So far, Jacob seems to match the energy of male survival horror protagonists we've seen in recent years, often speaking to himself when figuring out where to go for his next objective or cursing out monsters he's going up against following an especially harrowing encounter. He certainly cuts the tension a tad more than I'd like, but the Callisto Protocol atmosphere is so unsettling it claws its way back under your skin quickly enough. And the distance, Striking Distance Studio CEO Glenn Schofield quote, is quoted here stating, The writers wanted more dialogue and I wanted less, Schofield said chuckling, but we really had to kind of go back and forth through the process because you don't want the talking to take to step on the atmosphere that you've created. And audio logs would be available to help flush out the story additionally, similar to Dead Space, which a lot of the main creative leads from Callisto Protocol worked on the original Dead Space, so that's no surprise. Moving on though, it states, more so than the story, what struck me most about Callisto Protocol is the combat. The Callisto Protocol prioritizes precision as well but by putting that emphasis on melee combat you suddenly need to pull off exact movements in the heat of a brawl instead of from a distance it's not unlike the sensation of playing a game like for honor albeit in a sci-fi horror setting um i would also liken that to maybe fight night but i haven't played this preview so i'm not exactly sure for what it's worth though getting up close to the grotesquely beautiful monsters sounds like an intriguing way to set itself apart from dead space or or even Resident Evil for that matter. The article continues, mechanically the Callisto Protocol uses a combat system composed of attacks and dodges that are meant to encourage you to be hyper aggressive against whatever you're fighting. Jacob also comes equipped with a futuristic firearm but ammo is limited and the gun doesn't do nearly as much damage as your melee attack, except for when the enemy is momentarily stunned. When this occurs you have a brief moment, and I do mean brief, to quickly pull out your gun and fire at the highlighted weak spots. Doing so deals tremendous damage to whatever you're fighting even potentially carving off the limbs or head of your hose so that's where a bit of strategy might come into play and where it might seem to mirror some of the stuff from dead space and we're going to skip quite a bit here talk about the, the actual visuals of it it was mentioned in a prior interview this is this is not the article but prior to this interview or article that the the game features like a, a graphic engine that focuses on gore and dismemberment i believe and speaking to that i think mr schofield mentioned the brutality is accentuated by the grossness of the enemy design and environments you have to travel through. He's quoted stating, I try to push as far as possible, Schofield said. You don't want to offend anybody, although you want to bring it close to that dock. We got as close, we got close here and there, but we kind of pulled back a bit. It was more to be scary than be, oh, look how edgy we are. So it doesn't look like this is just a gore fest. It looks like they are trying to build up tension and atmosphere and kind of have that dressed up by the gore and the monsters themselves. So just touching on the, the gory, violent aspects of Callisto Protocol, it, it looks like that it's so violent and gory, potentially scary even, that it's been banned in Japan. And this is a quote from, I believe, the Twitter account of Callisto Protocol. It reads, The Callisto Protocol has decided to drop the release of the Japanese version as of now. The serial rating cannot be passed. We have decided that we would no longer be able to provide you with the experience you need. We hope everyone in Japan will understand. And if you have already pre-ordered, we will refund you. So that's pretty serious business, even going as far as refunding already existing pre-orders. Normally you'd assume they would just maybe take some time to edit out some features, but that would probably take too much time and effort and money, of course, judging from 
the press release here or their statement here, which um, could lead to could mean good news as far as how visceral the game is how good the atmosphere will be moving on to the article again there is stealth in the game but the article mentions that they didn't get to play a stealth section it was mainly like a corridor action sequence that also is where a lot of the the tension and scary moments might be as the author of this article jordan R rammy Raimi um, didn't really find it to be as scary as something like Dead Space, which is this, which is the direct comparison, I would say. At the one of the last paragraphs here, he's stating, obviously, since it's just a preview, I only got to play through a presumably small section of the game. It's way too early to make a definitive call on the Callisto, on the Callisto protocol, and a lot of what could make the game more horrifying and scary might be tucked away in parts of the Callisto protocol I've yet to see. We don't have long to wait to find out. The Callisto protocol launches on December the second. So that's the article there, just sharing some of my thoughts. Although the author of the article here was not high on the spooky aspects in this hour and a half of gameplay, it is a very limited portion, just like he mentioned, and the whole of the game still seems to create a tense atmosphere with fear of death around every corner, and the prospect of needing to get close and up in the face of your enemies, these gory fleshy mutations sounds like a thrilling draw to them to me and december the 2nd is not far away and i can't wait to play callista protocol when it comes out so moving on to the next story marvel's midnight suns this is a write-up from gamatsu by the way marvel's midnight suns season pass is detailed the main points are it will include four content packs each one including a different character first would be deadpool then venom morbius and storm will all be playable and in addition to these heroes and their respective new abilities each four post-launch downloadable content packs included in the season pass will introduce a new story mission or missions and a new upgrade for the app and a section of new skins and outfits. It looks like you'll be getting some additions similar to what we saw in XCOM 2 where we had a host of customizable features for our troops as well as new facilities for the for your mothership. So I'm, I'm a bit curious as to what those rooms that in that would be in your home base what they would do, what kind of functionality they would add. There's additional, there are additional items here. It looks like the season pass also includes the legendary premium pack featuring the following 23 premium skins, such as Blade from 1602, Captain America's Future Soldier skin, so on and so forth. And these skins are available right at launch. Marvel's Midnight Suns is due for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series, and PC via Steam and Epic Game Store on December 2nd as well. And I'll just get into my thoughts about having completed XCOM 2, which the creators of XCOM are working directly on this. Having played through that multiple times, I still have a lot of hype for this game. Despite the game's focus on cards for battle mechanics, it would really depend on how satisfyingly the XCOM team can incorporate this card battle mechanic into the already proven XCOM formula. I'll be looking forward to a more in-depth coverage of Midnight Suns when it launches on December 2nd this year. And that is all we have for today's video. Thank you so much for watching the video video and if there was anything I missed or you just want to make some suggestions for the next video go ahead and drop a comment like the video subscribe if you haven't already it helps more than you know and of course as always thanks for watching game x affinity